today is the first day since being in Northern Arizona that I can kind of get into a little bit of a routine. It's important for me to be in a routine and psychologically, it's important for all of us to kind of be doing the same things the same every day. They say that really 75% of all that we do in our lives are a continuous routine. So, you know, it's like getting up, making your bed, things like that. So to me, routine is important for my mental health. So I couldn't get into a routine for the first couple days being here in Northern Arizona because I was sick. <laughs> I was sick. I'm going to start taking all the uh, covers off and we're going to go and I'm going to go to the gym. Today's my first day. I feel pretty good and I'm going to work out. Yeah, I'm going to take off and you can see how light this is. It's going to get real light. Woo! <laughs> there we go. Yeah. It was tough. <laughs> the gym was tough. So I do love it. It's, they have really newer machines. So it was almost like learning how to do use the machines again. Am I straight here? Am I straight? No wrinkles? Well, a couple. Where are they? <coughs> <laughs> I know. I'm in the perfection mode, everybody. I hate wrinkles, you know, close wrinkles. But so it's like learning again. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit winded and I had to really take it easy. And uh, of course, a lot of you are gonna say, well, of course, Lee. Well, you know, I like to go for it. I'm perfectionist, so I like to go for it. But it's good advice for anybody who hasn't um, been, on, um, been at the gym for a long time. You can do it. You just have to go slow. Um, don't drag yourself and be a big baby about it, but you know, stretch a little bit but um yeah don't don't take it too far so. i hate a cold especially yeah. a summer cold yeah got all uh, uh plugged up but i last night i went to bed about 7 30 quarter of eight i didn't wake up this morning until eight o'clock oh my gosh i couldn't believe it when i looked at the clock so i guess i needed some rest no, did you sleep all the way through, though? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was great. Well, Might good. have to take a nap this afternoon, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not an easy cold, but it doesn't seem to last as long. So that maybe, you know, you get a big rush, suffer greatly, and then it goes away. So it doesn't just linger, you know? Yeah. Maybe that's better. What do you think? I think you're right. Now, here's a question for you. I keep seeing in Planet Fitness, I keep seeing these questions. And people go up and they put like a, a line down and then, you know, like and then across when it's five. Um, should apples be kept in the fridge or the counter? Well, <clears throat> being from Michigan, where we raise a lot of apples, they do have them in a cooler. So I think it's better to keep them in the fridge. Just my opinion, but okay. Uh, that's my thought. Well, I was wondering if you were in Southern Arizona, you might want to keep them in the fridge, but if sure. I would think if you were in a cooler and climate, you might want to keep them on the counter. I'm yeah. Not, yeah, well, yeah. I don't think it really matters. Does it really? I don't know. I think it's better in the fridge. Okay. But but what's, that's just my opinion. Now, yesterday they also had a question. What's your favorite meal? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Breakfast for me. Okay. And actually, I'm, I'm ready to 
I don't feel like going in anywhere, you know, okay. and I'm spreading spreading germs and whatever. I think I'll just do a... Uh, don't say it. Uh, uh, well... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I gotta have something to eat. So I think I'll do a fast food, something or other. Probably a McDonald's breakfast burrito. Okay. I like those. Okay. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, you talked about brain fog. I, I've, <laughs> I've got it too. Um, uh, Burger King has a has a good breakfast burrito also. So, what do you think, Abby? Huh? Yeah. Hey, Abby. Look at everybody. Oh, beautiful, hey, Abby. Up here. Look up here. So everybody can see you. There you go. <laughs> it's kind of a slow morning, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. mine's only just begun. I mean, it's not even 10 o'clock yet, and I've been up for yeah. two hours. I woke up at 3.30 normal. Wow. Well, I got eight hours, so. And then... Did some meditating, haven't done that all week. I think um, when you're getting ready to travel and you know you're gonna go somewhere, I mentioned in yesterday's video, it's a good idea that we power up our immune system and start really eating well. Huh. You know, not only do we have seasons change which can, which can make your body go out of whack, but then actually going to a different climate with different pollen with just, and then the, just the stress of driving. Um, yeah, I mean, you want to do that, and um, it's, and it'll just take a little while to get right back into the swing of things. Yeah, yeah. I think I had something in mind I was going to say, and because I brain fog, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so, <coughs> we'll continue on. And I want to mention, <laughs> uh, oh, yes. yes, I want to mention that yesterday's or no, today's video, actually, when uh, Lee and Abby went for a walk, they saw that very, very tall mountain that was snow covered. That is Mount Humphrey, which is the, the highest mountain in Arizona. And I know Lee and I have some uh, disagreements on this, but... <laughs> Mount Humphrey is, I believe, it gets up to 10,000 feet. So that's pretty cool. It's, and it's beautiful, obviously. I really like to see that. So that's it. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Well, we got to go somewhere and get her out, huh? Well, I took her out once already. Yeah, you need to walk. You need to walk. And I'll make sure to take bags for her poop. Absolutely. <laughs> Somebody asked me if we just poop bags. <laughs> no, I just pick it up with my hand, you know. <laughs> then I make dinner. <laughs> of course we use poop bags. And that person I don't think watched is a lot of my videos because you who have been with me a while know that that's one of my pet peeves. Because I've stepped in dog poop before. And it's... The worst was in Reno, Nevada at this one park. Or no, it was all the parks. People in Reno don't enjoy picking up their own their dog's poop because it's everywhere. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Nobody seems to pick it up, so. That's a shame. It's a crying shame. Yeah, yeah. It's a sin, actually. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, well, let's go get Paul some nourishment. What do you say? Okay.
went into the library, the main library here in Flagstaff. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I was looking through some picture books because I don't have time to read an actual book and I've read many books in my life. So I'm not opposed to reading a book. I just don't have the same amount of time. It would be fun though to actually just sit down and read a fiction book. Something just, something delightful, something to entertain my and tickle my brain. Um, but I don't have the time right now. But So I like to look at art because, you know, the big, thick books. Because, I mean, it gives me ideas for graphic arts. And it just, and actually for now, that sort of, that sort of tickles my brain. And, um, and tickles my creative sense. But the one thing I did notice, it was called, is by um, the artist Paxton. And it was um, 1909. It was painted in oil. And it's called Tea Leaves. Well, you know, I didn't really see the tea leaves too much. But doesn't it look, when I looked at the, oh my gosh, she looks like somebody who's holding a phone. <laughs> the way we look now, we're just sitting there holding our phone, leaning back and staring at it. She's obviously looking at tea leaves. I guess maybe that's what they read back then. But um, yeah, I this one kind of really stuck out and I thought I would share this with you. There were a few other ones that kind of tickled my brain. Let me see. The next one that kind of stuck out was a painting um, in 1911 by um, artist Sloan and it's called Woman's Work. And it, I don't know, I do like black and white and it just sort of stuck out. Um, it was from a book called American Realist, um, Realistic um, Artist at that time, 1911. So I think it kind of stuck out. I thought it was a nice painting. I mean, really, it looked very realistic with the, the lines. I know in New York City and big cities, they strung um, their clotheslines out. I don't think they can do that anymore, but yeah, they did that. So I really did have a good time. And then I got a book. It was called The Bear, The Bear Essentials, something like that, a cookbook. And I thought, well, you know, for nomad life, that sounds pretty cool. Um, but they, some of them, the only one that I think would work for me personally, I know some of you have, if you're nomads, you have a better kitchen. Um, mine is about as bare bones as you can get, right? A pan, a skillet, a little stove, a one burner stove with butane in it, one measuring cup that's a half a cup, um, one spoon, <laughs> yeah. It was um, titled a bacon and corn frittata. And it I read the ingredients, it sounded pretty simple. Um, it had bacon, now I don't normally buy bacon, but you can buy already bacon bits, real bacon bits that come in a little jar or something. And then a can of corn. And this one called for like seven eggs. I'd probably use a half a can of corn and maybe four eggs. And you just, it, it's so simple. So I will include the actual recipe for that and maybe try it, right? I mean, Paul could help me eat it. He loves omelets. It just seemed like something that I could um, get into of all, I mean, they all looked good. It's just that it wouldn't have been realistic for me um, to actually make them. But I did have fun in the library. I kind of stayed off by myself and kept my um, cough drops going. I feel really good. I really feel good. But every once in a while, um, I have still a little bit of a cough and a little bit of a dry throat. So I spent a good hour in there. Paul is still recovering. So thank you for all the well wishes. One thing I am, <clears throat> I've been working on these um, <clears throat> um, pistachios. When we were going through food, I know Paul had had these for a long time. And I said, well, let's open them. Well, I actually took them. I'll buy you a new bag. I promise, Paul. <laughs> and I've been eating a few. And I'm really giving getting into the pistachios. A couple of um, questions answered. I still am getting lots of questions because so many are new. And so I am, I'm not tired of answering them. And we'll all, if you will all my... Um, <laughs> loyal viewers will be patient. Let's be patient with them. These are called 
arm gaiters, okay? Now, I love them, obviously. Now, if you consider that this part of your arm is in the sun most of the time, you might wear long sleeves in the winter, but as far as this part, your hand, of course your hand gets in the sun way too long, way too much. And you know, I have, I've always had these old looking hands. They're just older looking. You can see the lines. My granddaughter, I remember she would hold my hand. My granddaughter, she's grown now. She goes, Grandma, I love your hands. I said, oh my gosh, they look so old. She goes, nope, I love them. And she would rub my hand. Um, but your hands, remember the Southern Bells? They always wore the gloves, right? Okay, so, um, but the the lower arm gets in the sun a lot more than the rest of your body, right? Because sometimes you wear sleeves, sometimes you wear the sleeveless, but it's sun damage. They get, as you get older, and if you don't know, I'm um, 70 years old, and I just, I've, and I worked um, the trades. Some of you, I know newer ones don't know that. I worked the trades for almost 10 years. I was a, I became um, eventually a journeyman painter. And I did work for an architect and did simple carpentry and um, did some, um, did some guidance on some remodels. And I worked very close with the architect. And he taught me how to schedule things up. So I got to work with the plumbers, the drywallers, and schedule them up. And I worked right alongside a lot of them. Well, you're out in the sun a lot. And I got damage on my arms. So this way, I don't have to um, keep them in the sun anymore. Well, there's another thing that helps is that I do bruise easy because I'm 70. You can go, you can quote me and you can say, Lee, you need to do this, you need to do that. It can be hereditary. And most of seniors that I know do have bumps on their arms. We have, we, we, because our thing, our skin gets thinner. So when we bump them, now why do I have more than usual? Because I'm in a small space. I mean, I turn this way and I might bump my arm. I'm doing this way. The other day I, um, this is, like, I, maybe I need new ones. It's kind of um, rough. And I bumped my arm on that. And it just scraped my I'm like, oh, my gosh. So, yeah, when you're in a small space, I'm going to bump just a little bit more. And I'm very active. So, yes, I am going to bump. So, with the bumps, yes, I like to cover these up. Also, they look pretty darn cool, I think. <laughs> they look cool. They're almost like opera, gl opera gloves, right? So I do have different colors and I have, um, and I wear them. Now, if you, in, in the winter, if you um, want to still wear a sleeveless shirt or a uh, short sleeve shirt, I mean, guys wear these too. Somebody told me that they were, um, when they went to, took their car to the mechanic, they knew one of the mechanics. And he said before, before he even looked under the hood, he put on his arm gaiters. And she said she was so glad to see that because she said her husband had worked under the car and sliced, I mean, literally really cut his arm it's, it, on the metal. So they're protectors. They protect. Not only do they cover up bruises, but they protect them from getting cuts and bruises on them. They're called arm gaiters. And I wear them all summer long. Every once in a while, I don't, but I do wear them. These are called neck gaiters. Now I do have, these are called pearls. <laughs> I know these are called pearls. This is a flag. A lot of you said, oh, she's a patriot. Well, whether I am or I'm not, um, I, it's a flag and these are very popular. They're all over this. This design here is, um, all over everything all summer long this summer. Yeah. But yeah, I do have my pearls on, you know, got a girl's got to have her pearls. But anyways, these are neck gaiters. Now these can be worn in many ways too. I can wear this as for my, for a headband. Yes, I can wear this. Now, even if you don't, aren't into wearing a, 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 a mask, you know, sometimes I'll be walking around and somebody's got one of those blowers, you know, um, instead of raking nowadays, people use the blowers. Well, it's blowing dust and dirt and it's just flying into the air. If I'm out walking and I see that, or there's a dust devil, if you don't know what that is, oh my gosh. Um, you can really get caught in a dust devil in Arizona, the wind and it spins and you can get caught in that. And, and when it's over, it's, it's, you got 
sand in your eyes. It's like a hurricane sand, uh, or a tornado. Sand in your teeth, your mouth, everything. It's, you're a mess. But if I'm walking and somebody's doing the blower, I put this over. It keeps um, dust from going in. So, so that's what's that. There was another question. Somebody asked me about this light. Yeah. Oh, I've, I, I've got the um, link in the video description, but I'll leave it. Oh, yeah. I bought two of these. I give these as gifts to my grand... I even bought one for my young granddaughter. She loves it in her room. She can go like that, you know. Um, Paul's the one that turned me on to this when I first met him. We were just... We had just met, and he turned me on to this. I love these lights. I've got two of them. You bet I do. <laughs> there we go. I mean, for nighttime, this is great. Now, what I like is the red... I like the red because in the morning, when you use a red light, you can't see out very well. Um, or people, I know, uh, brain fog. <laughs> I'm not feeling good. When people look in, they can't see very well. But I get to see a lot. Um, not real detail-y. I, I would have to turn on a flashlight if I drop something small. But I can see. And then I have this light on while I'm folding up my bed and things. But these are pretty darn cool. I will leave the link. They're only $16. Hard to believe, isn't it? And it's powered by USB. Hello? I mean, what could be better, right? And it does, let me see, it does have uh, a hook here that you can hang it up. I could hang it up here. It's got a lot of cool light. Now, see, this one is red. Oh, it, it goes to that one. It just, it cycles. There we go. It just cycles. That would drive me insane. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like it to do that. There we go. So those are some questions answered. And I know you have a lot more. I have so many new people coming in. I'm welcome. I just love it. And if you are new, I mean, I'm Minivan Lee, and I've lived in my minivan for six years. So I'm pretty, pretty good with all of what's going on in the world. I did more traveling in the beginning because when you first become a nomad, ooh, you want to drive everywhere, right? And then for a couple of years, I had to go back and forth, back and forth from Ohio to Arizona, back and forth. Ooh, the wind's really blowing out there. Well... I don't travel as much now. And with gas prices, oh my gosh, no. I mean, um, well, I don't want to waste my money like that. But I was talking to Paul about feeling ill. And it's a wonder. I mean, for seniors to keep moving all the time, I just don't think as a senior citizen, some may disagree. But I don't think that all, let me just say this. I don't think all seniors are... Oh, our set up, this lady just keeps moving. She keeps backing up and pulling in. I guess she wants to do it perfectly. <laughs> okay, she made it. Okay, um, I don't think that seniors... Um, can handle it as much as we think that they can. It's the constant moving around and constant having to find new things and, and get acclimated again. I think it does kind of break down your immune system sometimes. So I did see a message from you, David Merling, and you said that you were going to remind me a couple weeks before I'm going to move again, and you were going to tell me to <laughs> spruce up my vitamin C. Yes, I will do that. Yeah. Okay, everybody. I love you. Thanks for watching this episode. Um, it's just my secret life in a van. I'm in my van right now. It sort of is secretive, isn't it? I mean, people are all around me and I'm in here living. Yeah. I mean, I walk around and be in the city just like any other, any other citizen, any other local. But when I go back to my van, Nobody knows I'm in here. Some of you say, oh, no, they know you're in there. No, they really don't. They really don't. Because in Arizona, 
everybody has their windows covered, basically. I mean, anybody who doesn't cover up their windows or have super dark tinting on the front of their windows, I mean, that would be quite unusual because the summer sun is so devastating, you know, to the inside, your interior, your upholstery, things like that. So, okay, my secret life living in a van. Yes, and um, thanks for spending time with me. I love you guys a lot. We got the book. Please subscribe. That subscribing really helps. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? Why not? <laughs> You know you love these videos and you're back again, right? So please subscribe and go to minivanlee.com for neck gaiters, exercise videos. Yeah, and check out other products. I love you. Bye. It's the blob. Oh my goodness.